do 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 that's our news intro <laughs> Uh, today we're going to be talking about Google's memo that uh, went out, or a woman at Google's memo, I should say, went out uh, about um, discrimination about her being pregnant, working from home, as well as, um, you know, are you successful because your siblings and Americans and their vacation problems? Let's dive into it. <laughs> I want to say thanks to our long-term sponsor, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. If you're interested in learning iOS development, UI UX, full-stack JavaScript, or quality assurance, check out devmountain.com. Not only do they have awesome programs that will get you up and going, but they also include housing in their tuition so you can get up and go. If you want to find out more about what they got to offer and their locations, which they are in Phoenix, Dallas, and Lehigh, you can at devmountain.com. So interesting fact for those of you who are American workers uh, like myself, uh, we don't get all that much vacation day. Now, um, I remember, you know, many of my jobs I've worked in my life got no vacation, right? Working at, um, you know, uh, Domino's or uh, Papa John's or Albertson's, uh, wherever it was that I was working, got zero vacation and even zero benefits. And then eventually the state of California forced them to give you three sick days a year. And then you earn those. And um, But for those of you who are international, it may surprise you how little vacation the average employee gets um, compared to the rest of the world. So you can see here public holidays. We're about okay on public holidays. We have 10. But typical for days of annual leave, in comparison, we're about 28 days behind United Kingdom. And it's a bit crazy. And what's even crazier, I, I think on average, the um, the average blue-collar worker gets like 15 days uh, from what I was seeing. And what was... Um, uh, uh, what uh, what was sort of interesting about that is that the majority of Americans don't even use their vacation time because, um, well, the, the reasons are sort of unclear, but I'll tell you what I think it is. I think it is is that most people are broke, and so you can't take vacation. So even though you're getting paid for that day, typically when you go on vacation and you go on, on holiday, as I know, I know how you Europeans say it, on holiday, you go on holiday, <laughs> um, that... You have to spend more money uh, in the sense of like you're not typically staying at home. You're you're going out. You're experiencing life. You're seeing new things. That costs money. Travel is expensive, right? Vacationing is expensive. And so people are worried about that. And they'd rather work their ass off and get an extra check when they leave to go to somewhere else. So um, pretty interesting thing about vacation days. I thought it was in there. I'm not really going to talk too much about this successful thanks to your siblings. All I want you to know, my brother doesn't watch this video, these videos, but if he does, Dustin, I did it all, and you had nothing to do with it. Thank you. That's all I have to say about that. Um, let's talk about working uh, from home and being remote. Um, you know, there's been a lot, especially in our industry and in software, a lot of people are just loving remote, absolutely loving. Even if they've never worked remote, are um, very much about it and there's there's some concerns growing around it because studies haven't shown there's been conflicting studies i should say where um people working remote have been good people working remote have been bad but my thoughts on it is that just sort of depends on the people um which is why it's hard to happen but um you know this is a, a short little article about how more and more people are working remote and how people have this mentality and you'll see a lot where I work better from I work I get more done I'm more productive from being home part of that idea is if you've ever had to work in a, a corporate office especially as a developer there's certain jobs that you have to be on site for as a developer where your your job is to maintain the code and stuff like that you can do it every one of our tools is based on the web there's no real reason you have to be in-house and every job where I've had to be in-house, I have always had someone who needed something at every moment. Uh, so you might only be able to get into the code for you know, 20, 30 minutes before someone breaks you up. Hey, 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 
Uh, I need you to deploy this real quick. Hey, 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 can you look into this? Hey, 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 um, do you think we need this as an acceptance criteria? Hey, hey, so, um, and as a developer, that's part of the reason I'm, I'm somewhat, I used to be all for these open workspaces, but as you sort of mature and you don't need as much help, uh, and this is, this could be something that's just, you know, I'm at a different point in my career than I was when I started, and I don't need other developers. Like, I'm, you know, I work on a team, obviously, but I don't need them. I can do my job just fine without <laughs> without anybody else. Not always the case. But, you know, you have these things where sometimes, um, you know, you get more done because you're working from home. But there's also some cons, right? As, as this article goes on, you know, you have these cons of sometimes it's hard to hear. I've I've worked at companies where they spent a year and a half trying to figure out better recording software and be, better mics. It's like, yo, I bought this at home for like fifty bucks. Like, so it could just it works good. It's good enough that I can release videos to the world. And um, you know, you'll find out that as the as remote jobs continue to grow, so do companies, um, especially with the strong labor market in the U.S. and in the specifically in the tech section. I saw an article the other day talking about how. Although other parts of the industry are slowing down, you know, it's not tech. And that's, you know, tech software, all that IT, whatever you want to call it. But that's the one continual thing that keeps on, keeps on growing. And that's uh, that's pretty cool in that aspect. And so um, remote, as companies try to be more and more competitive, um, is going to continue to grow. Now, there's going to be other companies that are very old school. Like, I get calls from recruiters all the time, and um, one thing they, they try to say, like, a lot of these older, like, Fortune 500 companies, and I shouldn't generalize because I, I work with a company. I'm, I work at a company that works with 90% of Fortune 500 companies and is a, you know, does billions and billions of dollars of revenue. And that they're making an active effort to transform and, and be current. But a lot of these, and I have a lot of friends who work at like big ass banks and old, you know, all these, you know, companies I'm talking about that are just sort of giant legacy uh, companies <laughs> is how I think of them. They, um, where they're going to force you to come in in a suit and tie and they want you to sit in a cubicle instead of, um, you know, working remote because that's just how they do things. Um, a lot of those companies are starting to either one, uh, change their attitude or two suffer from not changing their attitude regarding remote because you know i just did a video this week showcasing how me just working you know three days remote partially remote saves me around 11 or twelve thousand dollars a year based on travel and time and money and everything so um that's enough about remote just know it's continuing to grow um uh, but you can see that there, uh, this is a nice little thing that they, they sort of talk about is that there's a bias against people who work remote. And I, I should say that we're more so talking about the state of remote work growing and whatnot. But at the end of the day, um, what you have to understand is that, you know, typically when you're working remote, you need to be able to prove your value very well. And you're going to be the first one cut because you're not there in person to, um, to um, talk about you're not the first one in person to make those connections. And, you know, that is a very true thing. All right. That's enough on a remote. Let's talk a little about um, Google and their pregnant workers. So what we have here is, um, so if you haven't followed this article, I saw this yesterday and sort of an unfortunate thing. Um, but it, it does happen from time to time where a, um, a young woman was going to go into management. This is a very summation of it, but I'll, I'll attach this, this link here, but you, um, I'm sure everyone will read this. Um, and she works at Google and she was going to, um, or she was got a management role, but her superior essentially told her not to do any managing until she got back. And then, um, the gist of it being after her pregnancy that she, she may not have that management role uh, when she gets back. And um, it's a very unfortunate thing. Now, what what can I say about this? Well, um, first off, the, the first thing that sort of comes to mind is that everyone who discriminates against pregnant women should be fired. Uh, and so um, I don't think there should be a dis discussion. Uh, but 
I say that because we have to sort of take extreme stances on things in life and we either we either value our children and our workplace and if you read the article it'll go on about how um she basically went to her manager as i understood it said hey i think i need to take some time off because of some some condition with the pregnancy and her manager basically said something like oh all those things about needing rest have been debunked and all this sort of stuff and so she she's worked longer than her doctor recommended so a couple things happen here one i think it's worth mentioning that you know every time you'll see headlines like this it's going to be google facebook microsoft that's always so misleading um because it almost sounds like it's a company culture thing and what we really have here is one person's negative experience and i at a company the size of google i don't know how many employees google has how many employees do you think google has a million google told like two hundred fifty thousand. google employs almost a hundred thousand people all right so alphabet alone employs about a hundred thousand people okay so with a hundred thousand people employed there's gonna be even if one percent are are dipshits that's a thousand people a thousand people suck and i don't think that's unreasonable and so i think this woman probably hit one of the thousand um now she's not going to be returning to google because of that and i i completely understand and respect that but um my my one thing with like oh Google has a problem with pregnant workers is I don't think Google has a problem with pregnant workers I think this asshole manager has a problem with pregnant workers um, because for the most part Google is a very liberal company Google is a company that probably has better pregnancy benefits than ninety nine percent of companies and really has taken care of her like this woman they they promoted her to a manager knowing that she was pregnant or going to be pregnant and then um her manager was upset about it because he probably was just one of those managers as a slave driver and like wants to work you to the bone all the time you need to be here this is your life this is my life and this is your life too all right and he's just a bad manager so um when something like this happens i think you absolutely are entitled to share your opinion about it and i think absolutely you need to um go and the one thing I that it's the so there's a second manager involved in this story that told her not to raise this issue up anywhere or higher because this person has influence. No, 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 no. That's not how we roll. You know, when I was at a company and I thought nepotism was an issue, I was ha I had no problem bringing it up to HR and letting them know. Now, did they do anything? No, because that it's me versus you know somebody's son or daughter that owns the company. Uh, but I think you should always be able to bring it up and you should have no issue. And if someone tells you else why, otherwise that's actually probably against company policy without a doubt. Like I have no doubt if we read Google's thing, it is not to dissuade people to report things if someone has a higher position than you. So both these people involved in this need to um, be re-educated, if not um, re-entered into the workforce elsewhere. But yeah, so it's a little bit unfortunate, but I think at the end of the day, um, we have a couple bad apples, and um, I sort of hate that term, bad apples. Um, but you have you have some some dipshits really at the end of the day that um, made this woman feel very unwanted, very uh, unneeded, and was being punished for having children. When at the end of the day, it's you know, you have to you have to think like these are. If you t if if you take a moment as a manager or as a coworker, um, and you say, especially as a, as a we'll just say as a male, right? I can relate to men much better than women because I I'm a man, right? So I'll never know what it's like to be pregnant, but I might have some idea of what it's like to have a mother. I might have an idea of what it's like to have a daughter, what it's like to have a wife or a sister. Um, these are things that I can relate to, and so. When I when I see things like this, I, I don't really understand maybe the pregnancy aspect of it, but I do understand that I would want the women in my life to be treated properly and that if they earn something, that because they're going to be out of commission, that maybe they're not treated improperly. And it's, it's one of those things where it's unfortunate to see, but I think that 
at the end of the day, I don't think it's a Google thing. I think it's just these couple of managers that are idiots and they need to work it. And there, there is an argument to say, well, these managers acted this way and were promoted because they acted this way. Maybe that is a Google problem. And that that's somewhat fair. But anyhow, that's today's week a, weekly news. I kind of liked uh, a couple of these articles. Uh, with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching the videos. Don't forget to check out my courses in the description below, which you can get for just $9.99 using coupon code CODINGGOD. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Hey, guys, don't forget to hit that notification bell or smash that like button while you're at it. And if you're interested, I just released my latest course, the 100 Front End Technical Question Challenge, which is there to help you pass those front end technical interviews. There's over 100 questions. You can get it for just $9.99. The link is in the description below or use coupon code CODINGGOD.